So what I'd like to uh, talk today is, is pre-existing immunity relevant for cancer immunotherapy? And uh, I'd like to discuss what we uh, put as a, a novel paradigm for cancer, that is the immune contexture of uh, cancers. So here are my disclosures. I'm the co-founder of AlioDX, an immuno-oncology diagnostic company. And so what are the lessons that we have learned after 15 years now or more of systems immunology in human tumors? So doing a deep characterization using high throughput technologies, analysis of the tumor microenvironment of human tumors. And is the immune system important against cancer? And just for the very young ones, uh, um, less than 10 years ago, most of the people in the cancer field uh, were thinking that the immune system was uh, irrelevant, and how to explain patients having either hot, hot or very cold immune infiltrated tumors, and why do we think that this matters a lot? So, um, when we started doing research, uh, you can build hypotheses, but it depends on the definition you have of certain things. And uh, um, it was thought initially. Uh, that uh, uh, a tumor and cancer is a genetic disease due to DNA alteration with a very cell-centric paradigm. And this very cell-centric paradigm uh, shifted a little bit, uh, moved in, in 2001, and it was thought that it was due to the acquisition of secondary key behavioral characteristic following genomic changes, that the cancer were progressing, etc. So our hypothesis was that cancer was not only tumor cells, but was really an heterogeneous microenvironment, very dynamic, and communicating with the immune system. And so we've tried to uh, 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 analyze that. And still today, the definition of cancer put patients into different categories, patients having a very mild early stage cancer with uh, a small tumor, no metastasis, and patients with a very aggressive or late-stage disease cancer with a more advanced tumor, so progression into the primary tumor from a small tumor T1 to a very big tumor T4, or having lymph node invasion end stage or metastasis uh, end stage, so tumor invasion metastasis. So this defines together with the grade of the tumor and with the tumor aggressiveness based on mutations, on driver mutations, on chromosomal instability, et cetera. This defines the cancer stages and the severity of cancer. And uh, we proposed something different that is uh, based on the data we obtained, that in fact, tumor progression, tumor invasion, the metastasis of the patients are in fact dependent on the pre-existing immunity of the patient and that this pre-existing immunity not only is determining the fate of the tumor cells, but also the survival of the patients, and that this pre-existing immunity is also determining the likelihood of response to immunotherapy. And so I would like to uh, illustrate that. So basically it was a, a, a very fantastic decade, uh, starting from mouse models. So there were several groups, in particular Bob Schreiber, Mark Smith, demonstrating in using knockout mice, real knockout mice against different elements of the immune system uh, with many nature papers uh, that immunosurveillance in mouse was existing. And then we worked a lot uh, together with other labs uh, uh, into the demonstration of the importance of immune cells in human tumors. And so we put this definition of the immune contexture, so the important immune parameters, and in particular, highlighted the importance of the T cells. And we put the definition of this immunoscore assay, which was for the first time for any cancer, showing that in fact, an immune evaluation was superior in predicting what was happening to the patient in comparison to the gold standard, that is the TNM uh, way of classifying cancer patients. And of course, this uh, uh, brought, got a lot of attention uh, after the approval of uh, uh, the, the checkpoint, so-called checkpoint blockage inhibitor. So uh, basically, instead of trying to target tumor cells, to target the immune cells, and in particular, uh, the T cells with anti-CTLA4 to start with, and the, all the other checkpoints. Um, so 
in um, 2013, it was the breakthrough of the year, the cover of Science Cancer Immunotherapy. And uh, this year, uh, uh, Jim Allison for the CTLA4 got the Lasker Award. So the Lasker Award being um, for an immunotherapy that is modulating this pre-existing immunity. And so what we started in doing was to not to focus on any particular molecule, not to focus on the pathway, but trying to, with high throughput methods, to uh, deeply characterize the tumor microenvironment. And so we analyzed uh, as much as we could all the subsets of immune cells that are in fact present within the tumor microenvironment. So all the subsets of T helper cells, all the subsets of memory, cytotoxic T cells, the subsets of B cells, NK, and all the innate cells that are all present in all tumors at different levels, at different densities, in different locations, with different co-receptors uh, expressed. And the first question we asked was, is there any relationship at all between immune parameters and early metastatic invasion? And what we looked was, within primary tumor, the presence inside either the lymphatic vessels that you can see stained in brown here, or within the blood vessels, the presence here of blue tumor cells inside, inside lymphatic vessels. That is a sign of early metastatic, metastatic invasion before the patients get metastasis. And so we started the analysis with large cohorts of patients, more than 900 uh, uh, patients with colorectal cancer, trying to see whether there was any relationship, either detrimental, so par immune parameters detrimental, favoring this early metastatic invasion, or beneficial, uh, preventing this early metastatic invasion with no impact. And I will not enter this, the, the details, but what we found was, uh, I would say, the surprising finding that the memory T cells and the particular subsets of T effector memory cells were in fact very, very strongly correlating with the absence of this early metastatic invasion and with an improved clinical outcome. So a positive impact, a positive aspect of the immune system was really the most prominent thing that we found. Then going deeper into the analysis of these adaptive immune cells, we took into consideration their location and their densities within the tumors. And we analyzed several cohorts of patients by doing um, the real quantification, more than 6,000 immunostochemistry, quantification of the adaptive immune cells that led us to the foundation of this immune contexture concept and to the immunoscore assay. So this is the way patients are classified. So it's based on the TNM, tumor node metastasis uh, uh, classification system. Patients with an early stage cancer, stage one, have a small tumor. Uh, patients with stage two have a more advanced T3, T4 tumors. Patients with stage three have lymph node metastasis. Uh, this is, as you can see, a very long follow-up here, more than 15 years of follow-up. When we do the quantification, or when we did the quantification of the memory T cells in two tumor areas, one is the center of the tumor, the other one being the invasive margin of the tumor. That is, these are two very distinct areas with different types of immune reaction. So when taking into consideration the density in these two areas, invasive margin of the tumor and tumor center, what we found was that the patients with a high densities of memory T cells were protected. So these are patients, more than 80% of the patients did not get tumor recurrence for 15 years. Whatever the stage of the disease, so even the patients at a later stage disease was protected. Vice versa, the patients with a low density of immune cells, so these are you now disease-free survival of the patient before tumor recurrence, and we have the same type of curves for overall survival before the death of the patients. All the patients, uh, most of the patients had a very rapid tumor recurrence. And again, whatever the stage of the disease, which means that a very small tumor can be very aggressive depending on the presence of these adaptive immunity that we can quantify here. So a coordinated adaptive immune reaction within these tumors was more than the classical tumor invasion parameters, was really predicting the outcome of the patient. 
And so the novel paradigm came really when doing the Cox statistical multivariate analysis. So testing for the strength of the parameter and the dependency of the parameters in a Cox multivariate analysis. This is for overall survival, putting into the Cox model the strongest parameter. So the T stage, tumor progression, the lymph node invasion, the tumor grade differentiation, together with this immune pattern that in fact we refer to the uh, immunoscore. And not only the immunoscore, the immune pattern is highly significant on a Cox multivariate analysis, but more strikingly, all the tumor progression, invasion, aggressiveness of the tumor are now not significant anymore. They are statistically dependent on the immune response of the patient. And so we put this idea that there are important immune parameters associated with the survival of the patients that consist in four types of parameters, the nature, the type of immune cells, the functional orientation of the response, the density of the cells within the tumor, and their location at the invasive margin front or in the center. And so we are refining this uh, immune contexture. So in contrast to most of the biomarkers that are uh, used, even if they are significant in univariate analysis, most of them are not significant in multivariate analysis, so basically not adding anything to the existing uh, uh, markers, no improvement for prediction. What's usually considered a good biomarker is something that gives a better accuracy, adding something to the existing classification, therefore being significant on a Cox multivariate analysis. But what we have is the exact opposite of this top situation where the immune contexture measured by the immunoscore assay um, as such a power and the tumor progression, the tumor invasion being dependent on that immune response, we have this type of novel concept for prediction. And we are refining this with additional immune function orientation of the response uh, with important immune related genes. The location of the cells is important, their density and the types of cells. So more recently we were interested into how this is changing because the tumor cells are constantly changing. They are proliferating, they are accumulating new mutations, and it's very dynamic, and the immune system is reacting to that. So we analyze the spatiotemporal dynamics of this uh, and look whether <coughs> patients at a late stage like T4, knowing that those patients were T3 before and were T2 before. So we know the kinetic here, not knowing the delta time, in between two stages, but we analyze the microenvironment at these stages, trying to see the relationship between tumor progression and immune reaction. And we end up showing this immune landscape in human tumors. So we started from purified immune cells. So here is um, each column, here is one purified immune cell subpopulation. So for example, you have the B cells here, and T cells, then subsets of T cells, then purified macrophages, purified mast cells, etc. And this is the immunome that are the top 40 genes that are the most specific for one given cell type, for example, B cell specific genes that are not expressed in any other uh, uh, immune cell types. And um, we analyze this immunome in these human tumors. So first we characterize the molecular characteristics and the molecular phenotype uh, and genotype of the, of the tumor. So this is a molecular classification like microsatellite instability of the tumors or hypermutations of the tumors or epigenetic features of the tumors. On top of which we analyze this immunome, the level of expression of these immune cell specific genes. And so we have now uh, metagenes that are coming from different innate cells that are overexpressed in some patients and adaptive immune cells that are in some other patients. And applying this immunome to a, a patient, so now analyzing the tumors, you can see very different groups, big clusters of patients, so here are the patients. And if we just look at these two big clusters of upregulated genes corresponding to different types of immune cells infiltrating the tumors, you can see different outcomes. Patients having these high immune genes corresponding to subtypes of immune cells 
are having a better prognosis than the others. And we validated this in independent cohorts of patients with qualitative PCR. Uh, of course, we, not surprisingly, the T cells, the cytotoxic T cells and the TH1, based on our previous work, uh, were showing up in group one uh, with very significant difference, as well as B cell and MHC class two related molecules, as well as T follicular helper cells but not other in, in innate or immune non-specific inflammation cytokines like IL-1, IL-8 would not be specific to any, any cluster. And so since those data were generated from deconvolution of gene expression profiling from complex mixture of cells, we wanted to validate this with real quantification of the corresponding cells by looking at the density number of cells per square millimeter of tissue of different subsets of cells like PDCs or T-Rex cells, etc. Or also doing triple staining to uh, uh, characterize, in that case, uh, the CXCR5 double positive T cells, CX, uh, T follicular helper cells, uh, the CD20 cells within the tumor microenvironment. And showing the densities of these immune cell subpopulations within the tumors. So now here, the height of the peak represents the cell density. So you can see the major cells in terms of numbers of cells, in terms of density within the tumors. You can see a network, the network being the correlation between the positive correlation between different subsets of cells. And you can see sub-networks here, the quantification in yellow being at the invasive margin of the tumor or in blue being in the center of the tumor. Some cells are excluded from this main network like the neutrophils, granulocytes that are very closely related to the L17 producing T cells. And now instead of looking at the density of all those cells that we can look at every cancer stage, so from in T1, in T2, in T3, in T4, and we can see the changes when tumor is progressing, we can also look at the impact of those cells on the survival of the patients. So it's the same plot, but now looking at the hazard ratio, so the uh, significant value that the densities have uh, regarding the survival of the patient. So the good cells, high density, long survival, are the green ones. And you can see that this network of adaptive immune cells with all the subsets of T cells, the T follicular helper cells, the B cells, with the exception of the L17 producing T cells, are all good. The two bad red peaks here from the network are the CD68 macrophages, uh, both in the center and the margin. So we think that um, these T follicular helper cells are playing an important role for shaping the good immune contexture with the cytotoxic T cells, the Th1 cells, and the memory T cells that are needed within the tumor and at the invasive margin of the tumor to protect long-term the patients, both for progression from metastasis, from tumor recurrence, and from dying. And we think that these tertiary lymphoid structures that are surrounding the tumors are probably playing an important role here in that uh, setting. So they are very different patients. Patients like this, full of brown T cells here, CD3 positive. Intermediate patients or patients that are lacking T cells in their tumors. So if we do the immunoscore, that is the standardized quantification of CD3 and CD8 in the center and the margin of the tumor, looking at the survival of the patient, a patient having an immunoscore 4 regardless of the treatment, the median overall survival is 15 years. A patient with an immunoscore 2, quantifying the density of all these cells, is 5 years. And a patient immunoscore 0, the median overall survival of the, all the patients is less than 2 years. So there are major differences. And of course, it's, I believe, very important to understand the mechanism by which some patients can have an immunoscore for tumor. And so we uh, analyzed this, the mechanistic uh, uh, um, uh, approach to see what could explain the different densities. And we showed several mechanisms, one of them being the local production of specific chemokine within the tumor microenvironment by different cells, attracting uh, positively correlating with different densities of different subsets of immune cells at different locations within the tumor. 
And more recently, uh, we also found out that um, the production of cytokines, and in particular the L15, was associated with the intratumoral proliferation of the T-cells within the tumor that expand the pool of the right T-cells uh, within the tumor, and the proliferating T-cells are very strongly associated with prevention of tumor recurrence. And of course, for immunotherapies, this could have a, a major impact because it is very unlikely that these two patients will respond similarly to a checkpoint blockade inhibition, for example. It is likely that to target a T-cell with a checkpoint, uh, you need T-cells to start with in your tumor. So it's much more likely that patients responding only to single agents checkpoint therapy will be hot tumors, whereas these guys, immunoscore zero with no T-cells to start with in their tumor, will need first a T-cell priming, like a new efficient cancer vaccine, or to introduce CAR T-cells in their tumors. But this is the black and white type of picture, and we know, all know that biology is much more complex, and in fact, we have everything in between the immunoscore zero and the immunoscore four, immunoscore one, two, three, with, in each of the group, different types of immune defects. So today, every patient with cancer worldwide, in Japan, in Europe, in the US, coming to the hospital has a lot of tests, but none of them, we don't know anything about the immune system of a, pa of a patient. There is not a single test to evaluate what is the immune status of a cancer patient, not a single one. So the idea behind the immunoscore is to move from this complexity, the immune contextual complexity, to a simple assay that could be done in routine. And so this is the way patients are classified, and these are all the markers that have been done routinely for cancer patients. So of course, the TNM staging system, the tumor extension, the tumor invasion, plus additional ways of classifying all the cancer patients. So the more based on the morphology, based on the cell of origin, the tumor cell of origin, based on molecular pathways, alterations, chromosomal instability of the tumors, mutations of the tumors, uh, the mutation status with the driver mutations, and tumor gene expression signatures. But there is not a single assay to evaluate the immune status. So the idea behind the routine immunoscore is to provide to clinician a first standardized immune assay to quantify the density of cytotoxic T cells in the tumors. And this is the power of the immunoscore. These are patients.